Hey folks, today we're going to talk about periodic trends, specifically ionization and electronegativity. These are the last two. This is a follow-on to the last PowerPoint. Just so that you know what ionization energy is, it's the energy needed to remove an electron from an element when it's in its gaseous state. Both of those are important. You're taking away an electron, and it's a gas. It's measured in kilojoule per, kilojoules per mole, and it reflects how strongly an atom holds on to its outermost electrons. So who holds on to electrons tightly? Well, we know that the noble gases hold on to them really tightly. And our noble gases are here. And they don't let go, nor do they actually take any. They just hold on to them tightly. Over here, we have things that hold on to their electrons very tightly, and in fact, a lot more, because fluorine will take on a minus one charge, oxygen a minus two. All right. That's an example that they want electrons. Whereas over here, Hydrogen will take on a plus one. Beryllium will take on a plus two. They give up their electrons. They're giving them up to the things on the other side. So these are held on to very loosely. And the things that are on the right are held on tightly. So high ionization energy. That means they hold on to their electrons very tightly. So the things that are on the right over here, these have a high ionization energy, and these have a low ionization energy. Okay, and this is high over here. So the further you move to the right, the higher the ionization energy is. Okay. The noble gases have a huge ionization energy compared to everything else, because they hold on to their electrons extremely a low ionization energy says it's more likely to lose an electron. So a low ionization energy would be something that took on a positive charge when it was an ion. In the high ionization energy, things would tend to take on a negative charge, so long as they're not enough of gas. All right, so ionization energy decreases as you move down a group. Why is that? Because everything's bigger. So I can't hold on to those electrons. It's easier to rip them away. By an electron that's way, way, way far away from me, you can take it pretty easily. But if it's close in, like with helium, you're not touching my electron. Okay, I can protect it. So ionization energies increase as you move left to right. Again, why? Because on the right-hand side, they're smaller. The smaller atoms hold the electrons more strongly, so more energy is required to remove the electron. Now notice this is the opposite of your atomic trends. Because... As something gets smaller in size, it becomes harder to take an electron away. If it becomes bigger in size, it's easier to take an electron away. So you'll see some equations like this, where you notice that you have lithium, and lithium is a gas, and um, the ionization energy is going to be measured in kilojoules per moles. How much energy does it take to rip this electron away from lithium? And we'll deal with this in kilojoules per moles. is always measured in the gaseous state because electrons need to be far apart for an accurate measurement to be made. So, we could conceivably take an electron away from lithium. We could conceivably take two electrons away or three electrons away. Now remember where lithium is on the periodic table and what its electron configuration is. Because if you remember that it is 1s2, 2s1, it's pretty easy to take this first electron away but it's going to be a lot harder to take these electrons away. Notice it only takes 500 kilojoules to get the first electron, but it takes 7,000 kilojoules, over 10 times as many, to get the second electron away. So it's easy to get the first one away, but it's very, very hard to get the second and third ones away. And that's because you've gone to a noble gas configuration when you stop here at 1s2. Okay. And I just said that. All right. Part of the increase in ionization is also due to the reduced electron-to-electron -electron repulsion, because the electrons are not repelling each other as much. As each electron is removed from the atom, the remaining electrons are pulled closer and tighter into the nucleus. So they're held on tighter. They're held on more by the protons that are in the middle. Let's look at this one. Where do you see the break in this one? Pause the video so you can see the break. Yeah, you should notice that your first one is 700. 
And your second one is 1400, which means that's another 700 above where it is. But now look at the break. You got up to 7,000. Again, you multiply it by 10. All right, so here's your break. So if you were just looking at this, you should be able to say, well, I think this thing belongs in column two because it probably loses two electrons. Hence, it probably takes on a two plus charge. All right? And I will tell you that this particular element happens to be magnesium. So it does exist in column two. Let's look at this one. Well, your first ionization energy is 700, 800. Your next one's 1500. Your next one's 3200. Your next one's 4300. Okay, 1,000 a pop. Oh, wait a minute. Look what happens here. Look at that 16,000, right? I didn't just go up by another 1,000. I went up by 15, uh, by another, what, 12,000? That's huge. So this tells me that I should be able to lose four electrons. Well, you know what that must be then, right? You think it's in the carbon group. It happens to be silicon, which is directly below carbon. Right? And this is something that can lose four electrons. All right. So let's look at the term electronegativity. Electronegativity is simply a measurement. It's a number. It doesn't mean anything aside from just being a pure number. And it is a reflection of an atom's ability to attract electrons in a chemical bond. Notice, the key words here are chemical bond. All right? We need to make sure that we are attracting electrons in a chemical bond. Okay. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. You need to know that. Write that down. What would be the least electronegative element? Well, if fluorine is the most, that tells you it's kind of small in, in size. What must be the opposite? Sure, the least electronegative element would be francium. Down the opposite end of the periodic table. All right, so make sure you write those down. Okay. Um, remember your definitions. Your atomic radius is the center of the nucleus to the outermost electrons. Your ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron. Remember, um, where's my cursor? There you are. It has to be in a gaseous state. And the third thing is your electronegativity. Remember, it's just a measurement, and it's higher if an atom attracts electrons in the chemical bond. And in the chemical bond is important, and fluorine is your most electronegative element. So you need to remember that. All right. So as I go up and to the right on the periodic table, the atomic radius decreases. That's from our last podcast. Notice what happens. Everything else increases. Your ionization energy increases. The amount of energy it takes to, um, to rip something away. Electronegativity increases. So up here on the right-hand side of my periodic table, if I think of this, kind of this, this whole thing as a periodic table, right? this is my periodic table. Then, as I go up and to the right, the atomic radius is smaller, and it's bigger down here, and everything else is backwards. So, again, same concept. If I go down and to the left, the atomic radius increases, but my ionization energy decreases, and my electronegativity decreases. So everything is opposite to atomic radius. So if you can figure out atomic radius, everything else works the other way. Okay? So you need to know your atomic radius trend. The smallest thing is up and to the right, the biggest thing is to the bottom, left. And your ionization energy is the opposite, and uh, your electronegativity is the opposite. Now, your successive ionization energy, that's what you're talking about taking away second and third and fourth electrons, you should be able to recognize when something crosses that break, where it crosses the noble gas break. And finally, the most and least electronegative elements you need to know that fluorine and francium. Fluorine is most, and francium is least. Questions, guys? Find me in class. And I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.